Hey guys, this is Justin with Zacos Realty and Design Group, and we are continuing this conversation, this dialogue and series of interviewing people here, local businesses that are just crushing their area of expertise. And today I have brought on a good friend of mine, Seth, and Seth is one of the original owners, operators of the Big Top brewing company and so i am excited to have seth here today to kind of tell us a little bit of his story his journey and let us know the history of big top brewing so welcome seth glad to have you here yeah thanks for having me so let's just jump right in i guess what was your initial dream i think i knew you as this was beginning as it was taking off before um, even yeah, yeah, before it even came into concept. So what was that initial dream or goal, even if I know some of it, in creating Big Top Brewing? Uh, the initial goal, or I would say dream, was I was always a huge fanatic of craft beer. Um, I moved into the Sarasota area in 2001, I believe, and uh, the Cock and Bull was the only game in town, which uh, Howie and Dawn love them, can't say enough about them. They're awesome. and. My love for craft really grew there because I lived near there. It was kind of my local watering hole. And it got to a point where, I believe it was in 2012, I started talking to my neighbor, Mike, who's now my partner. And, you know, I was just like, hey, man, it'd be really cool if there was some more craft in town. Sure. You know, we're kicking an idea around. I think at the time, World of Beer had just opened. And um, it was just between those two spots, that was about it. And we were talking about, you know, if there was a bigger craft scene, it'd be really, really cool. And then somehow that spun into a conversation with my neighbor about, well, what if we made it? Sure. I said, ironically enough, I have a friend that I ride motorcycles with and he's been home brewing for, you know, 30 years. So we cruised over his house on a weekend and sat around and had some beers on the back porch and we're drinking. Uh, he had his IPA on at the time, which is our Circus City. I believe he had his pumpkin recipe on too at the time, which is now our pumpkin. And uh, it just was a couple guys sitting around drinking beer and we spun up the idea of opening a brewery. That's great. I, I love to hear the, the origins of it. And obviously, even just to see the excitement, I think, from you kind of regenerated of those early days and kind of what it looked like a little bit deeper. What would you say that in Big Top, because some people will know you and some people won't know the brand, but what would you say is your differentiator? Like what makes Big Top unique or very special? Because now it is a crowded craft beer marketplace. Correct. That's a tough one. You like to highlight everything you can in your business, but if I had to narrow it down and whittle it down, I would say what had set us aside from the beginning until now, more than anything else, was the personality of our team. We we started off, and of course, everybody, there's a lot of great breweries in this town, and everybody makes great beer. It really does. And Josh did a great job at doing a really crazy, one-off, very unique, out-of-the-box thinking beers in the beginning, which got got us kind of put on the map and people really interested in coming to try and see what he had dreamt up next. But it was our perseverance and our, I think our just ability to always interact with, with our clients, our customers and everything. And just, I think I would say our personality, we, we, we welcome everybody. We enjoy everybody and we yeah. have always done our best to give back to the community and do everything in that way. So I think for what we lacked in startup capital and know-how and while we were still trying to get our feet underneath us, I think our just our, our personality and ability to get along so well with all of our customers and clientele, I think really set us aside from everything else. So speaking of that, whether it's um, lack of capital or lack of entry into the craft beer business or, or whatever that is, you needed some strategies to catapult you. And, and that's the way that I view where you guys are at. People will look at it and you, you know, 2012, 13, 14, until you actually were there and arriving. And then that till now is a relatively short period of time. Mm -hmm. And so the success from you starting here and in, in rising to a spot has, has been incrementally like large, like you, you've taken quick steps um, to get where you are. So what would you say from your perspective, were those specific strategies that you guys thought you would use yeah, to get funny. there? I think the biggest strategy was always trying to strategize, always try and stay ahead of the game, see what the market was doing and changing, seeing how the distributors were changing with what they distributed and how they distributed, just watching the market and never settling on any goal that I would say was longer than a quarter 
or even six months. So maybe your your ability to adapt and adjust constantly. We always had to, and we all we never let ourselves settle settle for anything. And it, I know that probably sounds crazy, but we didn't suit, you know set year two year goals. It was like, okay, what are we gonna do for the next six months? And we'd hammer away, and then you know three four months in it, we'd stop and say, how's it working? What's it doing? Where do we need to change gears or, or change direction? So constantly strategizing and trying to figure out what was going on around us and staying ahead of the curve, I think is what really helped us. Awesome, awesome. And then I guess maybe let's let's flip it and kind of go personally maybe in the interview to you. Um, I know you, like I said, I've been around you. I know you've been entrepreneurial and other things and in a bike shop and, and doing some things in that way. And then this business, how did it develop? Like that entrepreneurial mindset within you, like where did that come from in, in, in your perspective? That's a tough one too. Um the entrepreneur side i had i had a great mentor slash boss when i was a kid i started working for when i was middle school as soon as i could legally work through high school okay. same guy uh cliff morgenstern awesome guy he, he's phenomenal and he taught me work ethic 100 percent. unfortunately he passed away about 10 15 years ago but um living here in sarasota i got to work for lou and jody hasbrook who used to own um custom carts sure. there in 301 and uh can't say enough about them too how awesome they were but he gave me that push and i would say the entrepreneurs and all of us but he gave me the confidence i guess in the in the know-how and walked me through running a business he had for a while to give me the guts to go out on my own so i would say for sure any entrepreneur drive i've gotten was from him you know, I'm, which funny you know, years later i'm still friends with him. he's a stand-up guy and his wife are great people yeah i love that i love that mm -hmm. um and then continuing on that personal like growth sort of a mindset or entrepreneurial thinking but if you thought about yourself and and even just in this last year maybe a year two years what one thing do you think you have learned just as a person um that has helped you really dial in on being a better business owner being a better leader in the community and, and being able to be the things that I think you've talked about already. Uh, in the last year, I would say more so in the last year, you know, part of part of getting older too, getting up sure. <laughs> but um, learning how to really, really reflect on myself. I try to always, always been the person that tried to always make myself a better person. Yeah. And I've gotten, um, to the point where anything I hear, whether it's constructive criticism or things maybe disgruntled employees say or happy employees say, I try to get a little bit of it, all of it together and try to make myself a better person. And I think being able to deal with a problem or something that uh, pops up in the business more so than worrying about or stressing about the problem and just sure. adding to it yep. has been something in the last few years I've gotten a lot better at. Great. And so I, I said before, some people are going to know the big top brand name. Some people won't. Um, tell us where where can they find like what's the distribution channel for your obviously there are some some locations. Um, where is it being distributed? Where can they find your product? We are distributed mostly all through Anheuser-Busch distributors, with the exception of one we do a little bit with out in Sanford. Um, we are everywhere that distributes Anheuser-Busch from Tampa through Naples on the West Coast. We have Daytona through South Melbourne on the East Coast and the Panhandle. We're from Apalachicola all the way to Alabama. In Sarasota, Manatee County, we are Gold Coast Eagle, which is the Anheuser-Busch distributors. We are their number one craft. Cool. We do. They do really, really well with our beer. We have a great relationship with them. And so anywhere in Sarasota, Manatee County, it's pretty easy to find. So showing up in like Publix and Correct. and other types of grocery outlets. Oh yeah, outlets. in Dixie, C store, gas stations, and uh, a lot of restaurants. If you don't see it, you can always ask for it. If they got Anheuser Busch products, they can get it. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, we do well here, and like I said, those guys do a dynamite job taking care of us and distributing our beer. And taps on yeah. uh, mo most local restaurants. Yeah. Cool. I love that. And so, lastly, here's my last big big picture question. They're like rise up, thirty thousand foot view. If you think about everything that you've done and in, in all of the work to launch this this baby this project of yours how much would you attribute the success that you've had to you grinding to you some of these strategies and methods you've mentioned to just putting your head down and going after it and then how much would you say you attribute it to 
you know, everything in life has some bit of luck or something that just kind of falls into you um, along the way. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. Um, I'm, I'm not a huge believer in luck. Sure. And I don't mean that in an arrogant way because I feel that there, if you believe in luck, there's good luck and then there's bad luck. So at that point, it just cancels out. You know, you have, right. you have things that go your way and things that don't. They say that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Sure. So I'm sure bad luck is when you're just unprepared and something popped sure. up in your way. But um, without a doubt, my two business partners, the three of us originally started it, who is Mike Basaha and then Josh Wilson. Between the three of us, I don't, I don't know that many people that would work harder. Like we both, we all three of us had great work ethic. And I mean, in the beginning, 80, 100 hour work weeks and nobody was complaining and we were just ripping through it, but couldn't have done it without those guys. And if I had to put my finger on it, I'd say definitely the grind is what got us here. You know I mean, I mean, Josh, Josh is in his fifties and that guy still works circles around 20 year old employees we have. Yeah. Well, I say grind and I don't mean that in an arrogant way. No. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, we've had some good luck. We definitely have had some things fall in place that were perfect timing and everything things been great and of course we've had some bad luck no well hey thanks i just appreciate you you know jumping in and and, and uh, being a part of this series of interviewing um, local businesses obviously if you have a chance to to go out um, seek out big top um, they have a a room there right off from cattlemen yep. Uh, and and they have their new location. What What's your new location? Uh, the new location we're building is actually in the Fruitvale Commons where Cooper's Falk is. Yep. Is I guess the biggest landmark people recognize, but there's a huge Clive Daniel furniture store going in yep. there. We are the next lot north. We have two acres. It's gonna be a half acre beer garden. Uh, it's got a big, beautiful grand oak on the property. That thing would be cool for the beer garden itself. And uh, we're working on hopefully getting that project rolling, getting the dirt moving here in the next few weeks. So Great. it's been, a, been about a year in the, you know, in the in the architect and, and permit stage, but sure, sure. we're getting going soon, so. Yeah, so jump out, um, find Big Top. Um, they are one of the best here in the Sarasota Bradenton area um, from where we're broadcasting, but obviously you've heard they are reaching far across the state. So thanks for tuning in, talk to you soon. Thanks for having us.